In this huge three printer build, I've already built the frame of the machine, the set axis with the bed frame, and now it's time for the bed heater. I already have this huge piece of aluminum cut to size, so now it's time to make it look nice. Nice. These are the heating pads that I will be using to heat that aluminum plate. Each one of these draws 1.3 kilowatts of power, so these four will be powerful enough to heat that aluminum plate in no time. Maybe even too powerful. Because even though I have 9 kilowatts of power in this shop, there is no one single line that can give me the 5.2 kilowatts that I need for these four. But don't worry, I have a solution. I will be installing one of these rectifier diodes on each panel and I will flip the polarity of two of them and that way only two of the panels will be powered at a time so I will only need 2.6 kilowatts at any given time. I marked these four in here in blue just to know that I have to connect these four to the same side for this to work. We are going to use one of these solid state relays to switch on and off each one of the heating pads. And most solid state relays of this kind have a pretty funny way of failing. They stay on forever. They just don't switch off. Which means that if one of these fails, the heating pad will keep heating until it opens a portal to another dimension, until something catches on fire. But I have a solution for that too. This one in here is a thermal fuse. It lets the current flow through it as long as it is kept under 133 degrees Celsius. If it goes over that, then something melts inside and stops conducting, hopefully stopping the demons from other di hopefully preventing a disaster. So let's put one of these on its path. If you try to find these that melt at 60 degrees or 70 degrees, you won't find them because there is no way to solder them. It will melt with the heat. There are plenty of opportunities to make one of these trip. I need now to dry fit this in here because I need to know where everything goes and mark where the front part is. Now that the ground terminal is installed, it's time to stick the pads on the plate. And there is only one chance, because once those things are sticked, it's, there's, there is no way to take them out. So. I have to be sure of two things. The first one is that it is aligned, and the other one to remember to put the thermal fuse under the pad, somewhere around here. Not bad, I'm quite happy. And now it's time to put some insulation over it so I don't find my financial ruin with this printer. So let's get to it.
Now it's time to move this to the printer and finish the wiring, but before we do that, a quick ad from today's video sponsor, Onshape. Onshape is a cloud-native CAD plus PDM platform built for businesses, created by the founders of SolidWorks because they saw that modern product developers still experienced many challenges to their CAD and PDM systems. Onshape is accessible across all operating systems and works like Google Docs. An Onshape document is a single source of truth for your design data, it is great for working with teams and working from home. You can collaborate with team members and suppliers at the same time on the same document across the world. Data management is built in. No more file management on your local hard drive. Onshape uses a GitHub inspired version and branch merge model for fearless design experimentation. Onshape has industry leading manufacturing specific features for sheet metal and frame based design, as well as surfacing configurations and detailed drawings and it is always improving. New releases are pushed to the product every three weeks to add new features and functionality. I highly recommend the engineers and product developers watching to consider using Onshape for their business. And you can try it for free at onshape.pro slash Ivan Miranda. And now let's put this giant heat pad on the printer. I wasn't expecting that. It seems that I wasn't paying proper attention when I did the wiring of these connectors and I made a huge short. Luckily, I only fried one of the outputs of the Duet 3. It, everything, the rest of the board works perfectly, so I will use another one and rewire the connector. It's going better, no smoke this time, but I made another mistake. I did connect the four outputs as common ground and those are common positive, so I will rewire them properly and, and try again. This time everything is properly connected, but still no heating on the pad. At least now I can see the lights turning on on the relays, so the issue is now between the relays and the heating pads. After quite a bit of googling, I just found out that solid state relays with zero crossing triacs don't work with half wave rectifiers. That's a mouthful. Now that I've removed the diodes, I still have the problem. I cannot run the four beds at once at full power because the breaker will trip. It's closed, but I think it will trip. Now that it works, I can know how much power it draws. I can see that the four beds at once, it's saying overload. 
3.5, almost 3.6 kilowatts, which is 16.8 amps, which is one amp more than the rate of the breaker. So I will switch this off now before it trips. I can adjust the PWM duty cycle of the controller of the pads to something like 80%, so it's on 80% of the time, off 20% of the time, so it cannot go full power, which I think it will be enough. Let me try it. And now with the duty cycle of the beds at 80%, 15.2 amps, still a little bit too high. Power is three kilowatts. And this is only an issue when it's warming up. When it's hot, it's, it's not that easy. See, it's using almost no power. Everything works, so it's time for the glass. The aluminum plate that is hot is pressed against this nylon spacer, so this part in here doesn't melt, and the glass is trapped by this screw in here with the heat shrink, so the screw doesn't scratch the glass. Should work. With the glass installed and locked in place, let's see how fast we can get to 60 degrees. 30 degrees, 17 seconds. 40 degrees, 1 minute, 3 seconds. Fifty degrees, two minutes, five seconds. And sixty degrees, three minutes, nineteen seconds. It feels hot. And now I can explain why I didn't use a mirror like in my other builds and I used glass instead and I took so much effort to mark the four quadrants on the bed. And the thing is that this, this thing is going to use so much energy that if I want to print something that is really tall but will only use like a quarter of the bed, I can heat up only this area in here saving three-fourths of the energy, which is pretty convenient, or maybe half a bed, instead of having to heat up everything all the time. So the heated bed is ready. Next is going to be the kinematic system for the XY axis. So if I were you, I would subscribe. And now please go and make something!